Hello and welcome. We are the Sisters of the Holy Fiber. This is episode 17. My name is Devin, also known as Rambunctious Guy. And I'm Heather, also known as Tiny Kiwi. So, grab your embroidery hoop or your pin cushion and join us while we craft and chat. Welcome to any of our new viewers and welcome back if you've been along for the ride with us before. What are you working on this week? Episode 17. I already said it. Oh, okay. So shows how much attention I pay. Um, <laughs> what am I working on? I don't even know. Oh, I'm working on a hat. Let me grab the pattern. <gasps> Did you Wait. cast on for the Jane hat? I didn't. Oh. What are you working on? I'm not touching that. I'm not talking to that project. Oh. Um, so I got a free pattern for a slouchy hat. Um, oh, and it's super easy because it's not in the round. It's made flat, and then you seam it up after uh -huh. you're done. So that I will be not so afraid of making a knit hat. Mm. Hopefully. Mm. Um, so that's the only thing that I'm working on right now. Because everything else is finished objects. Yay! Hey. Look at me go. Hello. Look at you go. Except, of course, i got to undo the last line of what I just knit, because I forgot I was changing colors. <laughs> Ah, and needle sizes at the same time, just to make my life interesting. Chatham. Sorry, I forgot. Did you, um... Interesting, the last name of the internet. Where did you find the pattern? Um, from the knit group. The ladies have, uh, in my Tuesday night, Tuesday night, Tuesday afternoon knit group, uh -huh. the ladies have made this one before. Oh, cool. So I asked, and they had the pattern, so yay! That's super fun. So, there's what I've got of the hat so far. It's all scrunched up because my needles aren't really long enough. Whee! Pretty color. Yeah, and then I'm going to switch. It's the same um, yarn that I did for the cowl. I'm going to switch to this for the body of it. This is just the band. You'll have a matching. Matchy, matchy. I know. It's kind of accidental just because this is what I had that was um, red heart sized. Um, and that's so the cool. Had... Huh? That'll look really nice. I hope so because I, I haven't really made a knit hat before. I've only made crochet hats. Mm -hmm. So this is my first real knit hat. So far as I remember, unless I forgot something. Which is possible. No clue. Yay! Yay! Anything else you're working on? No, that's it. Okay. Well, I'm working on the two things that I was working on last week. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, I am working on my blanket. I haven't gotten that much farther on it, but here is the progress that I've made. Okay. Can you see that pattern very well in this yarn? I wanted to ask you what you thought about the pattern in this yarn. Um, well, unfortunately, your video is frozen for me, so hold it very still. I'm holding it nice and still. The power of Skype. Um, yeah, I can see it, but it, it does kind of fade away because of the um, variegation. Well, you know, just sort of the modeledness of your yarn. Right, that's what I was thinking. So... I don't know, but, but I figured I would finish. I haven't finished a full repeat, so I'm going to finish a full repeat and then stare see, at it some more from far away. See what it, I think. The shadows on it look really good and help kind of define it, but it some of it is kind of lost in that yarn. Yeah, I like this side. Like I get the cable out of the way. Get the needle out of the I way. I like yeah. the side cable. That yeah. one came out ooh, in the middle. That I one actually, came out nice, but these the middle part, like, I don't know. And I was thinking about, like, I'm going to finish a full repeat of the swatch, and then I'm going to um, maybe block it. Okay. Wow, that's, like, pretty heavy swatching for me. <laughs> um, so I've been working on that. I don't know why okay. I'm putting it aside. And then uh, here is the progress on my shawl. Oh, good. So 
I'm gonna, um, I'll, you know, like you have to bring it out. So here's the middle part. This is how it starts. Okay. And then this is the first chart. Let's see if I can get it in my hands. And hold it still for a little bit because I'm still having video issues. Oh, that looks good. They look like little pink foil flowers or something in there. Yeah, Pretty and cute. then I just started chart two, which doesn't really look like much yet. But from far away, it looks pretty. How, how are you liking the yarn? Still okay with it? Yeah. Okay, good. I still really like it. I'm glad. Yeah. I was still worried that you might not like it once the pattern got larger. I know. But I still like it. Okay, good. Yay! So you think you really are okay with it in general? Yes. Yay! Yeah. And um, I will be talking more about it in a later segment. Yay! Yay! And I think that's all I'm actively working on. Do you have any Pretty finished objects? Pretty much anything else has been put aside. I do! So yep. um, my friend and I were in... Um, Pottery Barn, I think, and we saw um, these wine cozies. Like, they were just on top of wine, wine bottles. Here, I'll show you a picture. Here we go. So there's the <laughs> octopus, and there's a fish, and a starfish. Uh-huh. And they were just on top of bottles. And she's um, going to be moving soon. Mm -hmm. And she was really excited about it. And she's also my mentor for my, because this is my first year teaching, so we have to do this, in California, you have to do this silly program thing when you're first year teaching. So she's been my mentor for that. Mm -hmm. So I've wanted to make her something, but she's just not the person that wears wool anything, so I really didn't know what to make. Um, right. But she saw these and got really excited, and I was like, those would be fast and easy to make. So right. she did. So here's the octopus. Um, currently, he's on some really large knitting needles because uh, I don't have a bottle in here. I was gonna say those are some pretty big needles you got there. Yeah, they are. They're rather large. That's pretty cute, though. Uh, this is a knit and crochet pattern. <gasps> I combined the two. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. well, whatever no. shall we do? <laughs> Did I do that? Who does such things? <laughs> so, uh, I had fun making it, and the best part about it is that it's done. Yeah. Uh, here is what it looks like on a bottle. Okay. So funny. Yes. So, uh, I want to make the starfish next. That mm -hmm. one, I asked in my... Slytherin nest on Ravelry. I asked mm -hmm. if anybody knew how to make the bobbly part on the because that's how the lumps are made on the starfish. Uh huh. And uh, so somebody posted a video or a link to a video and that was helpful. So I'm gonna try that when I have some spare moments. But we don't know when that will be, do we? <clears throat> so story of a teacher's life. All right. Well, and my concert for my kids is coming up on May twentieth. So that's eight days from when we're recording, and <laughs> so yeah. I'm kind of a little bit out of my mind, but... I was going to say, don't go crazy, but it's probably a little too late for that morning. But um, I got it done in time to post for Quidditch, so oh. I haven't participated in Quidditch on our House Cup uh, for a long time, because Ravenclaws are like, whatever, Quidditch, but... Yeah. Slytherins were like, quit it, yay! <laughs> so, <laughs> and um, I think it was posted enough in a summary form that made sense and made it easy that I was able to do it, you know, because I think Quidditch beforehand, sometimes it's just too complicated for me to care. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, but I got it in, and our nest, our mamba nest, um, 
we had 91% participation from our nest in Quidditch, which was the highest. We were the highest participating nest in Quidditch. So go us! Yay! Yay. We did it! That's yeah. so awesome. I had no idea. I haven't, I haven't, uh, I'm like 200 posts down or something. This is the most chatty our nest has ever been. It's so crazy. Oh, yeah, I'm, so used I'm, to- I'm used to Ravenclaw Common Room where I just like skip. 20 pages because there's like no way yeah. so if I get behind I'm like eh, whatever and I just go to the end yeah exactly I'm used to doing that in the um Slytherin common room because that just flies by because that's just full of everything but like the mama nest is usually like way slower pace which is one of the reasons I liked the nest is that you know I could keep up with it but it's like gone crazy I swear I brought you along and you made the nest explode Oh, I don't think it's me. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Just circumstantial evidence. Oh, okay. (laughs) That's all the FOs I have. Do you have any FOs? Indeed I do. Let me try to not drop stitches and set this down. Um, so my Quidditch project was a coaster, because that's what I totally love to do for points things, It's make the smallest swatch possible and turn it in and get points. Because I'm totally lame like that, and I love points. So I totally made a Scottish flag. Pew, pew. Um, it's kind of useless as a coaster, because it's acrylic, and it just does not really work as a coaster. Yeah, this is entirely a project for points. Yes, and, and it's I, like, we were talking about this off the podcast that I am not somebody who makes things just for points, and but uh, Tiny Kiwi over there will do that, but I, I draw Hooray! the line. Points, 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 points. <laughs> so true. And my bigger finished object, woohoo, is for detention. I totally finished this god-awful um, shell project that was supposed to be a scarf, and I just wanted to die thinking about making this thing for a scarf's length. So I didn't, and I took um, Rambunctious Guy's uh, advice and turned it into a cowl, and then I think, yeah, it was my a- other friend Tracy who su- suggested to make it an infinity cowl so you can see both sides of um, the project, where one side's darker and one side's lighter. Mm-hmm. And you didn't could just you, both you at talked once. about this last time too, didn't you? Did I? I don't think so. I remember you talking about Tracy suggesting infinity cowl on both sides. I linked you in the forum, that's why. Wait, wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. I'm pretty sure I haven't talked it about this. Whatever. Share it again. Yay, infinity cowl. Yay. Anyway, it's done. Which Yay, is the biggest... that's even better. Yeah, exactly, and I never have to look at it again. I am never doing that again. Unless you wear oh. it. I mean, it was a good idea. Oh, I'll just change colors every row. And then I realized that's a lot of work. And there's not really good instructions online for how to, like, switch the colors on a shell project like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because I had to carry the yarn along, and then... You want the yarn to come up at a part where it's not, like, visible, or at least as visible, and my gosh, what a... Pain in the butt doot! Yep, pretty much. Definite pains. Anyway, so glad it's done. Yay! So, those are my two finished objects. Okay. Although, I would kind of hardly even count that coaster, because it's really just so that I can (laughs) keep playing Quidditch. Well, there we was no some. yardage minimum, and they kept saying, like, no yardage minimum, so, okay. I know. Well, I'm going to make a Scottish flag coaster. Yeah, exactly. And that's pretty. that was exactly my thought process. I was like, well, because the, the next um, round, it does have a yardage requirement, um, or it has to be for charity. Right. So, of course, the small, probably the smallest project you could get away with making for charity would be a hat. Maybe baby socks or something, but, um, but yeah. Probably, like, blanket squares, too. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that would count, huh? I forget you can count blanket squares as a, as a, 
charity project. Yeah. Things. Yeah. I know a lot of the Slytherins do. Usually, I think it's mostly Anaconda Nest. I can't remember. But one of the nests is particularly big in um, in charity project oh, Quidditch oh, making, which is why they always have a lot of uh, Quidditch stuff going on. Of course, I can't remember exactly which nest. If it's not Anaconda, I don't remember. Well, we so. beat them, so there. I can't. I still can't believe that. That's amazing. We are uh, so awesome. Well, I, we needed to get something in because, like, otherwise you're locked out of playing Quidditch. And I was like, forget that. <laughs> I, I may not want to play Quidditch, but I want the option of playing Quidditch. Right, exactly. So, I sure told them. There you go, you tell them. Oh, uh, anyway. Alright, are we going segment. on next? Uh, brainy next moments. Brainy moments. Anything brainy to talk about? I'm going to make or link to a beginner's tatting video that I am have yet to make, but I'm going to do. Awesome. Yay. Yay. What about you? So, the shawl that I'm making. Uh. <laughs> it's complicated. Aww. And perhaps should not be worked on late at night. Oh, this is starting to sound like a bad story. <laughs> it all turns out good in the end. Okay. Like any good fiction story. Because my mistakes will mean that you won't make them, hopefully. <laughs> Unless you, too, are knitting past your bedtime. Oh, no. I don't like the story already. <laughs> <laughs> um... I was knitting past my bedtime, and I really wanted to start chart two, and I really wanted to, um, because, like, I've, I've done the math to figure out, well, I, I didn't do the math, I found somebody else's math for, uh, how, where I should be for this part of the month for getting it done in time. <clears throat> right. And I'm behind. Okay. So I'm like, ah, I got a knit. Right. So that meant I was knitting past my bedtime. And um, this shawl is based on pi, where when the radius is doubled, the diameter doubles. I believe that's it. Something like that based in pi. Anyway. Don't look at me. I'm not the mathematician here. What it, The increases are not done in the pattern itself. It's done every so many rows. So... This, so anyway, I did an increase row, which was a yarn over, knit one all the way around. Okay. And then I started the pattern rows, and then I, the pattern row didn't match up. Like, my numbers weren't matching up. And I was just like, oh, just decrease a few stitches, and, nah, eh, whatever. <laughs> right? This sounds like a bad idea in the happening. And I keep going. And I knit, you know, like, three or four rows into chart two. So I am now... And then, the next day, I look at my knitting. And I'm just, like, admiring it. And I'm like, oh, I forgot. Or I, like, I missed um, a decrease, which is, like, the top of one of the leaves. Oh. It looked really bad. So, I had to rip out maybe five hours of work. Wow. And re-knit. So, that's what I did yesterday morning. And that's why I'm behind. But I that's have ripped... And I fixed it, and I re it, and now we're back in business. But the That's moral the of the story sad. is, if you're off by eight stitches, instead of just decreasing extra, perhaps you should look for a mistake lower down, or put it away until the morning. <laughs> yeah. Which I know. I already know this. I have done this before. She's suddenly talking to her cat because she's a crazy yes, cat lady. Yes, Sorry, guys. Well, she is meowing at me. Between well, my I mean, boyfriend and your cat, we have more interruptions than we know what to do with. Okay. Uh, so, anyway. Hi, <clears throat> old lady cat. Yeah. Uh, well, Sweetie doesn't know any better. She doesn't know about the internet, so she thinks I'm talking to myself. So, who's crazy then <laughs> in that scenario? <laughs> That's horrible. Yes, you... Stop talking to the cat. Sorry. 
she's adorable. Okay. <laughs> well, so that's the internet. All my, that's my brainy moment. Okay. Go to bed. Go Stop to bed. Knitting. Go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Put your crafting down before you ruin it all. Yes. Do you We've have any shiny this week? Huh? Shiny. Next segment. I do indeed. So, let me not drop my stitches again. I got this new bracelet. Beep. Present from mom. Oh, I got one too. The, my, the beads got squished in the mail, so I got to glue them back together. Oh. Uh, right, right here. Uh, you know, just like they're plastic and they got munched a little. Oh, no. Thankfully, the main medallion is hanging in there. No, so I, no. I have to find some super glue and fix that. Mm-hmm. And the other thing I got... This is all shiny that I didn't have to pay for. So yay! Yay! Um, one of, one of the ladies in my Tuesday knit group was having trouble with a necklace of hers. Mm-hmm. It was like big, ornate uh, metal flowers, and it kept turning up and jabbing her in the neck instead oh, of laying flat. Ouch. Yeah. That doesn't sound pleasant. Um, so basically me and another... Huh? That doesn't sound pleasant. No. And it, you know, it's just, it, it doesn't look good too. It doesn't lay right. Uh, so me and another lady, we helped her fix it. Mm-hmm. So now it lays flat. Yay! Um, the, the other lady came up with the idea and I fixed it. Uh, so she gave us these little coin purses. Aww. Uh, filled with stitch markers Aww. as a thank you. And a, and a handmade thank you note. Aww. Cutest thing ever. Oh my gosh. I was like, you're the sweetest person, Audrey. That's very so, sweet. I was totally stoked. Yeah. Isn't it sweet? It's like, I feel like I should give her a thank you for the thank you. <laughs> I always feel like that with thank you stuff. Like, oh, this thank you present you gave me was so nice. Now I have to give you a thank you letter. And then it never ends. This is true. Anyway, so now I have a bunch of stitch markers and it's a totally cute little thing. It's got a, um, what do you call it? A little chain too, so I can attach it to my project bags, so I can always have my stitch markers with me. Awesome. And think of how sweet Audrey is. Yeah. Super, super nice. That's super. Oh, but by the way, your parents called her earlier. Hmm? That's super. Sorry. It's okay. Yep. So. Super fun. My turn. What about you? Yep. I got a wedding ring. Oh! Of course, the video decides to glitch out, so I can't see it, but... Yeah, my video, hopefully it's better on your end, because that just looks like blurry. It what? Shininess. Yeah, well, sorry. Not... Nope. Just looks like fingers. Fingers? Sorry. Yeah, your video's gone really, really bad. You are completely, um, nope, nope, pixelated. Oh, well, it's showing on my side. I'll try and show you again later. Well, uh, hopefully your side is the one that we record on, so hopefully I'll actually get to look at it later when... It's uh, sterling silver. It's maybe a half an inch wide, and it has... um. A lower part, it's got kind of two layers. The lower part is like an unpolished surface, and then like it's got little ribbons of um, polished that's on top, and okay. uh, it kind of looks like river water. Oh. Uh, it's very pretty. I am extraordinarily picky about jewelry and I don't wear rings we, and this is the only are. thing this is literally the only ring I have ever seen that I liked. Really? <laughs> I'm really sad that I can't actually see it but yes. I'm still happy for you. So uh, I was really happy to find it and um, yeah, got it yesterday so. Woohoo! Yay! That's my shiny. That is uh, a literal piece of shiny right there. It really is and it really is shiny. 
Oh, hey, your videos improved. Quick, show me. Okay, here we go. Here we go. You're doing. Sorry, that. guys. You're gonna have to do, make do with seeing it again. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. Now you can actually see it. I'll put it on my hand. Yay! Oh, that's so nice, Pookie. Yeah, you like it? Yes, I do. Yay! We both are very, very particular about our jewelry. Yes, and I don't. I'm just not like into gemstones and diamonds and all that yeah made like the engagement ring was made up by a jewelry company people made up by a jewelry company anyway <clears throat> off my high horse so zfolio gallery is um where i got this from and uh they have one in solving which is like a little tourist town and uh we drove out there uh, and i saw it and i liked it so we went in and looked and i like that it's more artist made you know it's not like mass produced right i mean i think he mass produces these because it's mo his most popular one but right i still like that it's not from Smaller a regular packs. jewelry store yes so. uh yeah what about hyperventilate what are you super excited about this week oh you don't even know oh so, you look really excited i am super excited um I almost never, ever watch commercials, ever. I hate commercials with a burning, fiery passion. So, you but me. I watched this one. So I was uh, listening to music on YouTube, and a trailer for Constantine came up. Okay, Constantine was the movie with Keanu Reeves in, like, I want to say mid-2000s, like, 2005 or 6 or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. Mm -hmm. I could be completely wrong on the year, but it's around then. Mm -hmm. But now I think they're making a TV show out of... Yes! Eee! So, hopefully it's, like, closely based on the um, Vertigo Comics Hell Hellblazer? Mm -hmm. The original mm -hmm. uh, John Constantine. Mm -hmm. So, now that it, if it's going to be an actual, like, TV show series, then hopefully they'll be able to do more, like, from the original comic and stuff. Mm hmm So I'm super excited about that. Wow. Super wow. stoked. And I don't like TV either. So not only did I watch a commercial, but I'm excited about a TV show. So, yeah. That's what I'm currently geeking out on. Yay! That's exciting. It's super exciting to me. Now let's make sure I didn't do this row wrong again. Well, I'll talk a little bit while you look at your row. Sounds good. <clears throat> I have been watching more House. I think I wa I think I mentioned it last time. Yeah. I am currently going through the first season. And I think at some point I was watching House on Hulu when it was first coming out. So that would have been like quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. But some of these episodes are familiar, like parts of it are familiar, but the fun mm -hmm. part is, it's been long enough that I don't remember what happens! Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it's like it's new all over again! It is. So, it's been fun watching them, and uh, I've been knitting to them, but with this shawl, I have learned, one of the other things I've learned is that I have to pause house and count. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, I think going into that project, too, you knew that there were parts where you really were going to have to pay more attention to the chart and stuff, so. I was hoping I was going to be, like, some awesome lace knitter and not have to do it. And, like, Devin, you haven't knit this kind of lace in, like, two years. So. Well, not only that, I don't know but... where I thought that magic voodoo was going to come from, but. <laughs> anyway. It's lace. Yeah. You know? It's pretty. And yeah. I really, I am enjoying working on it. And I didn't even know I was, if I was going to be able to work on it while I was podcasting with you right now, but I'm doing okay. So. Okay. Well, at least you think so until you look down at it, and next thing you know, you're on the wrong row. Well, the other thing is, is that I put in stitch markers for my repeat, to mark my repeats, and I'm a good girl That's now. Yeah. No more mistakes and having to rip out five hours of work. 
Yeah, that really makes me sad that you had to do that. I would have been crying. Well, I might have cursed and and I realized it. The good thing about it, though, is like I realized it when it was nighttime, and I was like, "Put it away." Yeah. Go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Get up in the morning and look at it. You know. Yeah. So, that's, that's really the is. best thing to do because you just make yourself more frustrated when you've already made the mistake and it's late at night and you try to fix it and then yeah. It no, just, that would not have been a good. No. Take it from everyone ever who has ever crafted or made any kind of artsy thing ever. I know, right? We've all been there and still do it. I've been, I've everyone. done this before. Right. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, uh, going on. Books. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go along. I am oh, yes. still reading Umberto Echo. I will still be reading this for a while. You guys are going to get bored of this segment in me. Name of the Rose by Umberto Echo. I am probably ten pages farther along than I was last week. Yippee. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Well, at least it's something different <laughs> than Songs for Children. Let me grab the book. Hold on. Uh, okay, so... This is part of the things that I got last week. Um, the Japanese bookstore was having a big sale, like 50% off on almost all the books. So I snagged a bunch of books, mm -hmm. uh, crafting books, because they're downsizing their shop. So half of these books are probably not going to be there anymore. So I grabbed the ones I wanted. I'm just glad that they're not really going out of business, because I was really sad. Um, so this one is on weaving. They're using, and I looked it up, it's 100% recycled paper. Oh, interesting. Uh, here's a picture. The brand is EcoCraft of the um, uh, rolls, of, the strips of paper. Mm -hmm. um, and I've looked for it. I can't really find uh, an equivalent here. Of course, EcoCraft is kind of just generic, so it's kind of hard, a hard Google. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to think of what I could, or looking around to see what I could make a substitution for. Because mm -hmm. um, I'd really like to make some of the baskets in this. Mm -hmm. Let me show you some of the nice ones. And I think I already showed you this, because I was super excited and I had to show you. Where it's all like... Yes, that one. Loose. Cool. And lacy. Like, I would have never thought to make a basket like this, but it's a brilliant idea. Especially for a basket to hold fruit or something you don't want to rot. Mm -hmm. And a couple of, um, you know, just, they're just the simple sort of, like, this one's kind of a he hexagonal looking basket. Uh-huh. But, uh, but uh, fun stuff. Let me go to this one. This one has a bent top or like a sort of U shape. Oh neat, yeah. So you use like thick, thinner, and then even thinner to make the shape at the top. Oh neat. So I showed it to um Tracy who has done actual basket weaving because she's a weaver and she um uh, was excited at the concept of using clothespins to hold things. Let me find out a good um picture. Cause when you get to oh, a certain to hold the pieces in place. Right. When you get to a certain point, um, keeping everything going the way you want it to can be difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember what she said she was doing at the time, but she was like, oh, they're using clothespins. That's a good idea. So I was like, yeah, I thought it was clever. That way, you, you know, like you can't have your hands in more than one place. You only right, have two hands. Things. Right. There's, I, don't, I can't find a big picture with the clothespins, but let me see if I can get close enough. Mm, let me know if you can see the picture. Yeah, just hold it steady right there. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So when you get to a certain point of shaping the basket, you put the clips in specific places to keep it from unwinding as you're making the rest of it. Uh-huh. Um, anyway, so I've got to find some kind of substitute material, raffia or something, because if I could just find some kind of paper ribbon or something, I might be able to... To swing it. I looked around at, um, where did I go? Michael's. And I didn't, uh, find any. 
Uh-huh. Um, so if you're a basket like, weaver, yeah. let us know. Let us know. Yeah, exactly. I found some, like, raffia ribbon. Or mm-hmm. was it? Might have been jute ribbon. But um, it just wouldn't move the right way. Mm-hmm. So I still got to keep looking. But that's my book, that my new book that I'm excited about. Awesome. And I've always wanted to do basket weaving. So maybe I'll try it if I can find the materials and not get distracted, which is... Squirrel! 20,000% of my problem. I'm sure I've talked about so many things in this podcast that I'll never probably get around to doing or get around to doing like three years again from now. Which is why my whips bag is starting to be larger than my not whips bag. Oops. Well, you're gonna crack into that, so. Yeah. I okay. started purling. Oh no. On to I Spy. Oh. You just said oh no, so I will let you look at what you were doing, and I will talk about what I have spied. Sounds good. I went on a field trip with my students. The ho- our whole school goes to our nearby university, and um, they do. They've organized the day where each, each grade level is doing something different. Mm-hmm. I went with our fifth graders, and they have like an ecological kind of like center on campus, and uh, so they had different stations, you know, and one of the stations was holding local snakes. So that was really fun. (laughs) And uh, the yeah, the kids really liked it. And they had some, they had also some from the pet stores and stuff, but I can't remember what they're called. I don't I don't Don't worry about it. Yeah. But uh, that was fun, and the kids really were enjoying it. They were like, oh, my God, that snakes. <laughs> so, so that was fun. And the other thing, I've been seeing a lot of birds in flight lately, and I'm just like, I need other sparks. I need the bark. <laughs> yeah. I don't I need to. It's flying. Oh, it's, it's some kind of raptor. I'm sure it eats other small things, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I haven't really been able to identify anybody lately, though. What about you? Oh. What have you been up to? I'm um, just the usual guys. The only, um, I saw house sparrows. Uh, the mockingbirds are still kind of going crazy in our neighborhood, but they've um, a lot of them have calmed down. We have still one or two males that are singing in the neighborhood mm-hmm. at all hours. Um, and uh, I think I, I think he not he picked up a small blip of something that I think was a hawk crying instead of his usual car alarm routine. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was interesting to hear in the middle of the night. Uh, what else did I see? Brewers, blackbirds, I think, and uh, grackles, which are totes cute. But all the usual stuff, the usual contenders around here. Mm-hmm. Um, all the cute birds. Yay. Oh, and a crow. Who was just sitting on something, making his little territorial ya yeah, ya yeah, yas. I forgot. I did see something really cool. Oh, what did you see? I don't remember what it was called. It was some kind of sparrow. But at the same uh-huh. university, um, they we were, like, near some bleachers or something. So, like, up high there were these eaves. And then these birds had made, they're the kind of sparrow that make their nest by like eating something and spitting it up because the nest, like they had made, this was the eve, right? And they had like attached their nest to oh. it. Yeah, like a little mud nest? Yes, something like that. Uh, it was really cute. And they were just like all over and I could hear the little birdies, the little babies going, <laughs> And they were just, their swallows were just going in and out and in and out and in and out and up and down and all around and yeah, it was cute. It's adorbs. It's yes, I've never it's... seen like a swallow colony like that, so it was really cute. Oh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, um, usually the only places I see swallows are when we're traveling up and down like the five or something on mm-hmm. overpasses. 
um, there's a couple of places in the middle of California where there's a uh, colonies. Mm-hmm. But usually yeah. that's it. Yeah, it was really fun. Okay, are you done with that? Yep, that's it. For um, let me double check. Yeah, mm-hmm. I got the grackles, which is the most exciting part. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Ear party. What are you listening to lately? Um, so I guess this is kind of also hyperventilating, but um, I was looking online to see um, music blogs mm-hmm. or, you know, like ways to keep up on current music because I was listening to a bunch of stuff and I was like, this is all from like 2005, 2006, and that's great and all, but what's out there that's current? <laughs> I'm, I'm so tired of the same stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, I found pitchfork.com, mm-hmm. and I started checking out stuff uh, that they had on their website. Uh, let me, I had to write one of them down. What's her name? I don't know how to say her name. Leaky? Leaky Lee? I guess L-Y-K-K-E-L-I. Mm-hmm. She's a uh, Swedish singer-songwriter. Mm-hmm. Um, and her stuff is kind of like, well, at least... Her new album stuff, I, don't, I haven't listened to a lot yet, so I don't really know. Um, it reminds me of Fiona Apple, just kind of that sort of sad, like, I'm sad, and I'm singing about it kind of songs. Only it doesn't, she's not nearly so, like, angry at the same time as mm-hmm. Fiona was. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, Fiona, she's not only sad, she's angry. But um, but I've been enjoying that, because it's just a, something a little different than what I would normally listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, what else have I learned? Oh, the song that I was listening to is uh, Love Me Like I'm Not Made of Stone. Hmm. Um, and then I was listening to a bunch of all, all other stuff. Uh, Meat Puppets. I don't know if you've heard of them. Um, <laughs> Nirvana puppets. cover. No, yeah, Nirvana I have not heard of the Meat Puppets. Yeah, That's an awful gotta name. Let go. When you're done. Anyway, if you've ever listened to Nirvana stuff, you've probably heard them cover a Meat Puppets song. Anyway, so I finally got around to, like, actually listening to the original source material of the Meat Puppets, and I like it. Um, but if you don't like Nirvana, you won't like the Meat Puppets, because the sound is pretty similar. Almost exactly the same. Um, but the song that I like that Nirvana covered as well is Plateau, amongst a bunch of other stuff. But, so that's... I'm going back in time. So Leaky Lee for current, uh, Meat Puppets for, like, I don't even know, like the 90s, and then um, go back even further. And my last person is Peggy Lee, which was the song, the Fever song that I was singing earlier, because that just will have pops in my head. But um, I was listening to some of her, like, older stuff that's, like, more blues jazzy. Mm-hmm. Um... I don't know enough about you. I'll link to that one. Um, I like her stuff. And uh, she's got a really, really large, like, discography. So Mm -hmm. I could probably listen to her for a long time without running out of things to listen to. But but that's it for my music, musical forays lately. What about you? I've been listening to Heather Combs. She's a singer-songwriter based in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just occasionally can't get enough of the two CDs that I have, and they just kind of play on repeat. Gotcha. Yes. I looked on YouTube to try and find something that I could link that is one of her favorite songs. And I, like, one of the... One of her songs that is my favorite. There we go. Right. But I couldn't find anything. So, uh, there. I mean, I couldn't find the ones that I liked. Right. And I don't think the stuff that's on YouTube is really a good representation of what her stuff is like. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I wouldn't go to YouTube. Did you try Daily yeah. Motion? Sometimes they have stuff that we can't get here. Did I try what? Daily Motion. I did it's, not. I don't even know what Daily Motion is. What is Daily Motion? Um, it's kind of like YouTube. It's almost exactly like YouTube. Um, except that it's 
can't remember which continent it's based out of, but it's not the U.S. as far as mm. I remember, which is why they um, can host videos that you can't really host on YouTube's because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. things get shut down for mm -hmm. copyright reasons. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if you can't put it on YouTube, you can find it on Dailymotion. Interesting. Which I do when I'm looking for music, especially obscure stuff. Right. Good to know. Yep. Next segment? Next segment! Walks in the urban wilderness. How's your exercise going? Been good. I've gardened three times this week. Whoa. Uh, I haven't walked as much as I would like to, which is none, but at least I've been gardening, so that's something. What about you? Did you do your yoga stuffs? I did. Yay! I finally went to yoga. It was like been like three weeks, but um, yes, I went to yoga, which was really nice, and I was really sore the day after. Yeah. That yoga class is usually a little bit more stretchy, but it mm -hmm. was a little bit more workouty this time. And Got it. The, the one that I go to, they hold the poses for longer. Mm -hmm. And the class starts at 1030 and it's supposed to end at noon. It ended at 1230. So not only like we were there for longer than, yeah. <laughs> than normal. And, uh, yeah, but it's fun because that class, he often incorporates shoulder stands, mm -hmm. uh, supported with a chair. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so that's fun because, you know, you're totally upside down. Whee! Yeah. And I also have been biking more on my road bike. Last week, there was a women's ride that I found out about, so I went, and it was a pretty easy paced ride, which was good, because that's where I'm at. I'm like, I can't do anything yeah. cray cray. But I went with my friend who um, has been looking for other people to cycle with and was really excited to find other women who cycle, mm -hmm. and the um, organizers who put it together invited her to go out and ride really far with them so that was fun that she connected with them and that's awesome. with other crazy cyclers <laughs> it's uh, always good to find people that share your kind of your brand of craziness but it was really fun to go on the ride with other women and it was like 20 women on a bikes you know so yeah. we just kind of like took over the little bike lane and it was really fun <laughs> that's cool yeah Safety. i got a rack for the back of my bike so I'm going to try riding to work tomorrow. The, one of the reasons I haven't been riding to work is because I need to, like I yeah. work at a school and which does not provide me any kind of computer and I don't know how I'm supposed to do my job without a computer so I have to schlep my computer back and forth. Right. And um, so I need something that I could attach to my bike for that so I'm still working on that and that hopefully I'll be able to um, b bike to work more. I also walked to my cooking class. I am taking my vegetarian cooking class again. Oh, okay. And um, I had a really fun time at cooking class, and uh, it's, you know, like two blocks away from my house. So, Is that the same to teacher you had before? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh. And she does different recipes every time. And, oh, good. Uh, she complimented me. She... I think she likes having me because I pay attention, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. And oh, she got reminded my knife skills. Apparently my knife skills have gotten better. She's like, oh, nice knife skills. It's like, yay! Yay! Always nice. Always nice. I um, learned something. Would you be interested in a um, vegan cake recipe? Um, sure. Is it good? Okay. Yeah, uh, Katie, Katie Mack, um, who's, I'm pretty sure she's vegan, um, uh, sent it over the Facebooks, okay. uh, and said that it's really delicious, and so I thought of you, because it's hard to find really good vegan recipes, so, you know, I share them when I find them. Yeah, I'm always learning for, I'm always willing to try new dessert recipes. 
Yay! Yay! I know, I mean, it makes it sound like a hardship, but come on, it's desserts. Yes, and I think we are off into randomness. We are totally in randomness. Yay, randoms! Um, So I wanted to mention in our random segment my condolences to the Weasley sisters. Did you hear? I haven't been watching. Oh. Um, No, I, I saw it on our... Our I'm Slytherin group. Their mom passed away. Um, oh no! From cancer. Yes. I had no idea. And her mom was playing in Gryffindor. Apparently, their mom. Yeah. So. I mean, and they were just making stuff for her. Yeah. So That's super sad. sad. Yes, it's very sad. So, our condolences to the Weasley sisters. Yeah. All right, gals. Yes. We're I'll all holding s- you in our thoughts. Yeah. I'll have to send them some kind of e condolences. Yes, and the Slytherins, you know, we're doing all kinds, you know, blanket squares and things. So there's ways to reach out if you are so inclined or if you know them or watch their podcast, too. Yeah. Yeah, just, you know, if you're interested in getting involved in any of the stuff that Slytherin's doing, you can just message your nest leader. They'll know what's going on. Yep. Yes. Uh, The other thing I have for random is at the yoga that I went to. I went right next door to have lunch afterwards, and mm-hmm. somebody also had the same idea in line be- and was in line behind me. So we started chatting, and she's a textile designer. Oh, cool! And she, and then you know, I and I didn't know this until I was just talking about like I like yoga because I knit so much and I'm a hunched over, you know. And she's yeah. like, "Oh, I'm a textile designer. <laughs> Do you want to knit for me?" <laughs> What? So, yeah, she was asking, she might hire me to knit for her. So Wow. But I don't really know if I would want to knit for hire. I yeah. don't know. I'm not, like, that fast at it. But I thought it might be something fun to inquire about and, you know, see if I like it or not. So. Yeah. After this shawl is done. And I told her, like, I'm not doing anything until. The shawl is done. June. July 30th. So would you, would you be doing test knitting or would you be doing actual, like, creation of things? Yeah, I'd be creating things for her runway, her, like, collection. Oh, okay. Craziness, well. For her to put on models and show. If nothing else, it's a fun person to know. <laughs> yeah, you know, and she was really nice, and, and then um, she's from New Zealand, so it was also... Oh fun, because I studied abroad in New Zealand, so we were talking about New Zealand, yeah, so she was a nice person to know, and yeah, yeah. so it was fun. Cool beans. Yeah. Anything else from you? Nope, I'm pretty boring this week, thankfully. <laughs> so, hopefully, once we get this one up, we're aiming to get this guy up uh, by Thursday, and then we'll be all caught up, and we'll be putting one out a week like we're supposed to be. Yes, and our yeah. new goal is to post on Thursdays. Yes. And we so had now you've heard a set posting it. day, and then it kind of got all flubbled around. So yeah. we'll We're get working back on, on getting it to a regular schedule again, like it's supposed to be. So thanks for sticking with us and being patient. Potatoes, and that potatoes. Huh? Potatoes, potatoes, whatever. Yeah, pretty much. If you were looking for consistency. I hope that I was supposed to actually be purling and... Okay, good. That's the problem with crafting and working. And there goes a boyfriend. Like Sasquatch. A sighting! (laughs) Anyway, so... I was going to cut that out, but now I have to leave it in. Now you got to leave it. Why not? Okay. So... See you next week. Yes, and our show notes are available at sistersoftheholyfiber.wordpress.com. Come and join our Ravelry group if you have any comments for this episode. Post in the Ear Party thread if you have something cool you want to share that you've been listening to. Or if you have any ideas for what you want to hear us talk about or anything like that, just drop us a line. Oh, yeah. If you, like, we, we, we'll talk about anything. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah, as you can probably tell by the way, we managed to always manage to get a, an hour's worth of talk out of, I don't have anything to talk about. I don't, I'm not working on anything. What? I'm not working on a thing. And next thing you know, we've been chatting for an hour. Yay! Uh, 
So we'll see you guys in our blog or on Ravelry, and we'll see you around. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Outtakes. Hello and welcome. We oh, are. I'm looking at my phone. Taken by surprise. <laughs> I gotcha. Hello and welcome. No, I don't think so. You don't get to steal my lines, madam. I am a perfectly normal squirrel. I mean, girl. Uh-huh.